uh, greetings everyone you are welcome here in this video tutorial i am going to discuss how to solve the java netbeans question which comes in class 12 board examination in informatics practices now the question which i am going to discuss today is from the uh, cbsc paper of year 2016 outside delhi So the question is usually a, a situation based question in which some situation is explained and which is followed by some questions so let's see what steps to follow to solve that question correctly so step number 1 is read the question thoroughly so the question is it is usually question 4 part g so let us first read the question carefully mrs sharma works as a programmer in abc car rental company where she has designed a software to compute charges to be paid by the client a screenshot of the same is shown below this is the screenshot of the program then a client can take any car out of deluxe semi deluxe ordinary for rent and a client can also opt for services of a guide charges vary depending upon the type of car opted if the type of car uh, selected is deluxe car the amount is 1000 uh, rupees per day if it is semi deluxe car the amount is 800 rupees per day and if it is an ordinary car the amount is 700 rupees per day Uh, now the charges of services of guide are extra help mrs sharma in writing the code to do the following after selecting appropriate radio control and check box if required when calculate button is clicked amount guide charges and total amount should be calculated and displayed in the respective text fields amount is obtained by multiplying per day charges of car with number of days for which the car is taken if guide required check box is selected guide charges per day are rupees 500 and guide charges is calculated as car required for number of days into 500 and total amount is equal to amount plus guide charges the second part of this question is when clear button is clicked all the text fields and check boxes should be cleared and the third part is when close button is clicked the application should close so you can see this is the screen this is the design part of this uh, problem and in which Uh, there is one label name and we have this is a text field in which name will be entered then this is the phone number which again is a label and then in this uh, phone number will be, will be entered then these are the three radio buttons one for deluxe semi deluxe and ordinary car and this is a check box for guide required and then uh, the car required for number of days will be filled here in this text field then there are three buttons calculate clear and close and again uh, this is amount and the amount will be calculated and displayed here guide charges will be calculated and displayed here and total amount will be calculated and displayed here so let's let's see uh, what is the next step now after reading the question thoroughly the next step is to understand the calculations which are required to be performed so in this case first we will check which category of car which is represented by three radio buttons uh, it means which category of car has been selected so it is very important in this question first to check which category of car is selected then we check the amount to be paid per day to rent that particular category of car because it is different for different categories of car so after the category of car is selected the next step is to uh, check the amount 
which is to be paid per day for that particular category. The next thing is that we have to calculate the total rental amount by using the formula total rental amount is equal to rental amount per day into number of days. Then we check whether guide is required or not. If guide is required, we will calculate the guide charges by using the formula total guide amount is equal to 500 into number of days. And now we will calculate the total amount by using the formula total amount is equal to rental amount plus guide charges. So these are the steps which are to be followed to solve this problem. Now once the calculation part is clear to us, the next step is to try to solve it manually first. How will you solve this problem manually without using, without writing the program first? If the steps are clear, it is very easy to convert these steps into a programming language. So in this case, uh, suppose the category selected is deluxe car. So it, it means if the category is deluxe car, the amount to be paid per day to rent this deluxe car is 1000, which is given to us. Then uh, we will find the number of days which we will get from here. Uh, how many for how many days we require uh, the car to be rented. So uh, suppose it is 5. Then we calculate the total rental amount which is rental amount per day into number of days. Now the rental amount per day is 1000 and number of days is 5. So if we multiply the two we will get 5000. The next thing is to check is whether guide is required or not which is checked using this uh, checkbox. So, if I say yes, I need a guide. So, I will calculate the guide charges which is 500 into number of days for which the car is renting. We are For which we are renting the car which is 5 here. So, 500 into 5 is 2500. So, the total amount which the user has to pay is 5000 plus 2500 which is equal to 7500. So this is how we calculate this problem manually and once it is clear how to solve it man manually, the next step is to write the code part. Now there are few important points to note before we step onto the coding part. In each question, certain calculations are to be performed. Uh, the first thing which we must know is what values are required to perform that calculation. So we first check what all values are required to perform that particular calculation. Check the source. So we check the source of these values, the values which we need to perform the calculation. We check the source and the values they come from either the text fields or through some decision making. That is using radio button, checkbox, list or combo box. Now once the source is clear, we will store the required values in memory variables. For text field, we use the get text method and for decision making statements, we use either if else or switch case statement. And using these two things, we will store the required values in memory variables. Now the next step is store the result in memory variable. Now once we have all the values with us, we will perform the desired calculations and we will store the result in a memory variable. Now once uh, the result is also stored in a memory variable, the next step is to display the result. So the result obtained after, after performing calculations is displayed in certain text field with using set text method. So these are the points which you must note before you start this Java question. So let's start coding. Now uh, the first part we have to calculate the rental amount. So we'll declare a variable rental amount of type integer and then uh, we will assign it to value 0. 
Now, uh, according to the radio button uh, selected, uh, we will set the value of the rental amount. So, we will check if J radio button 1 dot is selected, rental amount is equal to 1000. If J radio button dot is selected, then rental amount is equal to 800. And if J radio button 3 dot is selected, rental amount is equal to 700. So, depending upon which radio button has been selected, we will set the value of the rental amount. Now, once the rental amount is set, we will calculate the number of days. For that, we will declare a variable number of days of type integer. Now, the getText method will get the text stored in JTEX field 3 and integer.parsent method will convert this text to integer and then it will be stored in number of days. So, here we will get the number of days. Next step is to calculate the total rental amount which is equal to rental amount into number of days. So, by using this formula, we calculate the total rent of the car which the user has to pay and once it is calculated, we will set it in JTEX field 4 using the method setText. Now, uh, let us see the explanation in more detail. Now, see the first line is int rental amount equal to 0. Now, this statement, uh, it declares the memory variable rental amount. You can see here, this is the memory diagram. A memory will be allocated to the variable rental amount and we are initializing it by the value 0. Now, next, we are using the radio buttons uh, to check the value of the rental amount per day. So, we will check. Uh, so, in this case, suppose I have selected the deluxe car radio button. So, I will check if J radio button 1, this is J radio button 1, this is J radio button 2 and this is J radio button 3. So, I will check if J radio button 1 dot is selected, rental amount is equal to 1000. If J radio button 2 dot is selected, rental amount is equal to 800. And if J radio button 3 dot is selected, rental amount is equal to 700. So, I will, you can also use else if you want. Both of them are correct. So, these statements will check uh, out of the three radio buttons, which radio button has been selected and then assign the appropriate value to the rental amount. So, in this case, as the deluxe car radio button has been selected, so the rental amount will have the value 1000. Now, the next statement is int number of days is equal to integer dot parsing j text field 3 dot get text. <coughs> so, in this case, you can see the get text method will get the text stored in j text field 3, which is 5, and then integer dot parsing will convert it into uh, integer and then it is stored in the variable number of days. <coughs> As you can see, this is the variable number of days and this is the memory allocated to this variable and the value 5 will be stored in it. Now, the next statement is rental amount is equal to rental amount into number of days. So, this statement is will calculate the rental amount. Now, the rental amount earlier was 1000 and when it is multiplied by number of days which is 5, you will get 5000. So, 5000 is the rental amount and the next statement J text field 4 dot set text double quotes plus rental amount will set the rental amount which is integer at present and it will be converted to a string by concatenating it with null string and then this value will be set in J text field 4. You can see here 5000 is visible here. Uh, so, now uh, we will calculate the guide charges. For this, we will declare a variable guide charges of type integer and we will initialize it by value 500 because it is given in the question itself that the guide charges is rupees 500 per day. Now, the next statement is to check whether the J checkbox 1 is selected or not. That is whether the user wants the guide or not because if the user wants the guide, we will calculate the total guide charges. So, we will check. If J checkbox 1 dot is selected, guide charges is equal to guide charges into number of days. That is, if the user wants the guide and the checkbox is selected, 
we will calculate the total guide charges by multiplying guide charges by number of days. Now the next step is to set the value of guide charges in JTEX field 5. So we will write the statement JTEX field 5 dot set text double quotes plus guide charges. So this will convert first guide charges to a string by concatenating it with a null string and then it will be set in JTEX field 5. The next step is to calculate the total amount. So we will declare a variable total amount of type integer and then uh, we will add the rental amount which we calculated earlier and the guide charges. We add up these two and we will get the total amount and we will set the total amount in JTEX field 6 using the statement JTEX field 6 dot set text double quotes plus total amount. Uh, so there is one mark each for calculating and displaying the guide charges and one mark each for calculating and displaying the total amount. So this is by the board marking scheme. So let us see the explanation of these lines using the memory diagram. So the first line statement is int guide charges is equal to 500. So this statement will declare the memory variable guide charges and assign the value 500 to it. So you can see this is a variable guide charges and the memory allocated to it and the value 500 is stored in it. Now the next statement if j checkbox 1 dot is selected. So it will check whether this j checkbox is selected or not. So if it is selected we will calculate the total guide charges by multiplying the guide charges by number of days. So number of days we have already declared earlier in this program. So which is 5. So we will multiply it by 500 and so the new guide charges will become 2500 and now the next statement jtex field 5 dot set text double quotes plus guide charges it will set the value of guide charges in jtex field 5 which you can see here now the next statement is in total amount is equal to rental amount plus guide charges so this this statement will calculate the total amount by adding to rental amount and guide charges and uh, you can see here uh, the rental amount was 5000 and guide charges was 2500. So when we add the two, we will get the total amount as 7500. And uh, uh, now the next statement, J text field 6 dot set text double quotes plus total amount. This statement will set the total amount in J text field 6. And uh, so this is how the entire problem is solved and all the uh, values are calculated. So this is all for this uh, 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 the first part. Now in the second part the clear button uh, it is the coding of the clear button. When clear button is clicked all the text fields and check boxes should be cleared. So the statement for clearing the text field is j text field 1 dot set text and then double quotes will give the same statement for all the text fields which are present in the form. And for clearing the check box the statement is j check box 1 dot set selected false. So when we say false, uh, it will clear the checkbox. So according to the board marking scheme, half mark is there for clearing all the text fields and half mark for clearing the checkbox. And the third part is when the close button is clicked, the application should close. And for this, the statement is system dot exit zero. So you will get one full mark if you write the statement correctly. And please take care of small and capital alphabets. So uh, this is all for this video. If you like this video, kindly give thumbs up and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.